You're watching All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. Welcome to All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. As always, I'm joined by my guy, JC. JC, how, how are you doing? Geez. And you look, you look delicious today. That coat is proper. Oh, I feel good. This shout out to Big Terry, actually, yeah. looking after me. It gets a lot of airtime on this Big Terry. Yeah, you, you know what? what? Big Terry's a big part of my heart, man. A big yeah. part of my soul. He's yeah. a kindred spirit, man. The ox in the box, we like to call him on a Sunday <laughs> thing. He's, 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 he's in the running for the golden boot for our is Sunday he? team with a combined total of maybe all of his seven goals have come from... I'd say at least 12 inches. Really? He just taps them in like, he's just, yeah, the ox in the box. He's got that way about him. Yeah. I like the ox in the box. You, Maybe you one day. You that moniker on, didn't yeah. you? Oh, mate, so I, you know what, though? I'm thinking, I'm, I'm going into vets myself. We should yeah, do a friendly yeah, yeah. against each other. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I'm looking at going back, though. I, I, I've never played up front. I played it for, from the soccer aid, and it's a hard old position to play. It is, it? mate. Get in the yeah. back. You can see it all. Yeah, see it all. Yeah, be like the Beckenbauer. <laughs> no doubt. Beckenbauer. No Joe, we're, we're blessed today we are. to be joined by a wonderful former player joining us on the show. She's the third most capped England player of all time with 144 appearances to her name. During that time, she played in four different World Cups. I mean, that's insane. That insane. Four different World Cups. Her club sides include Arsenal, Chelsea, Birmingham and the Chicago Red Stars. And if that wasn't enough, this lady's also got an MBE for services to football and is now one of our leading pundits. This is, of course, the wonderful... Karen Carney. <laughs> you know what? Uh, it's I a bit embarrassing when you said no, that. You know what? I, I, felt, I saw you. Right? We were talking about Sunday League. We were talking about the auction in the box and two very average, oversized footballers in me and Big Terry. And then, and you're, you're quite comfortable. And as soon as I started reading out how, all your credits, you generally started going, oh, no. Well, it's like right. cringy, though, isn't it? Like, you don't really... Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, but books. But you're humble. There ain't... Most, I think most footballers... Are, well, I'm the same. Like, when people start... Doing that, I'm like, oh, I don't. No, you do, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just think it's natural for people, no? Huh? I, uh, yeah, but mate, we, you've had some people. Do you know what? I, as well, and this is probably something in life that I've noticed is the more stuff that you do, and the more you accomplish, the less you actually sort of almost need the mm -hmm. accolade of sort of people telling you how how amazing you are. So, so if if you if you sort of like, uh, yeah, and this isn't to speak, but if you've got one cap for England mm. or you scored one goal in the Premier League, that's your one thing that you want everyone to know about. But I mm. think the more accolades and the more things like you guys have got, the less you, the importance is on because you know you've you've you know gee, people talk about you for generations. That's incredible. Do you think to sort of be the third most capped England player of all time? But, yeah, I don't. I, I think your generation as well. I don't think there'll be the next generation because you've moved the game on so long. I don't think there'll be many players getting 100 caps like you. You must have started in your teens, playing and right mm. way through to your early 30s. I don't think that'll happen. When was your first cat? What age were you first? 17. 17. That's mm. about, like... Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's Pele. <laughs> but, no, no, but it's four World Cups. He's like... I know. Do you know what I mean? But four's a taller. Four, yeah. Four's a taller. Because of the longevity of it all. It, I mean, we'll obviously get into your career, <clears> but... You know, in more detail, but it is in... And, you know, we were just talking before we came on air about sort of Casey and Kelly and, and um, mm. yourself. Like you sort of feel like you're the you're the guy you're the you're the people who've really pushed the the women's game and I mean that now it's such a it seems such a big thing like I, I know so many people like I'm in a WhatsApp group and with a load of Chelsea fans <laughs> you know love this guy but they're they're constantly messaging about the champ women's yeah you know, we're in both Champions League final you know yeah and it's, it's amazing yeah you know, it's mad, mad now to sort of think of how much that's grown and. And how much you're responsible for that? Is that the, the, almost the biggest amount of pride that you take from your career in growing that? Or? I think I don't look at it like I've like helped grow that. I think I look at my like Kate Chapman, your Rachel Yankees, your Kelly Smith. I don't really see that. Where I probably think I've helped is going into the media side of it now, mm -hmm. um, just trying to normalise it because um, I feel like the generations before that did that playing wise. And probably I'm not one of the first to go into media because there's been lots of women go into it. But I feel like that's where I've kind of made it. That's where I probably take more, not pride, but I think that's where I've noticed it a little bit more in terms of making that a norm. So I don't really think I'm like a first in really changing playing wise. I think I've made more of an impact doing the punditry stuff, which is really weird. Um, because at like like yourself, we just played football, we just did it and just rolled with it, and then it just it's just gone from there on. But I think the real change is perhaps um, going in the media. Really, that's where I see it. Karen, as well, you, she you've, you're doing a university. Yeah. Degree. Like so, the, the girls that we work with on BT, they're unbelievable. They've really yeah. got other things going. Like you, you've got any Luca works for you know you've got a job, a, a 
yeah. another job, the media stuff, the degree. Like the girls are well, so well rounded. Because I mean, as a men's football, you're in football, mm. and you know, obviously, the disparity in the pay. We 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 were so so well looked after, but the women are well rounded. They go and they got they like got all these different things going on. And we chat all the time at BT, and like they're honestly they're they're amazing. She, she's going to like school the next morning. I'm getting up, <laughs> going for a coffee, I've got and going it for golf. So yeah, but I, only, later. I only got on uni. I don't know if I, I told this was because I went and met Emma Hayes for a drink. Yeah, and uh, she just said, "Oh, come and meet me." And uh, I was like, fine. And we're just having a general catch up. This was in the bit where you could have a catch up in yeah. the, the COVID break. And uh, she went, oh, I'm, I'm doing an MBA. And I was like, all oh, right, cool. She's like, I think you should do it. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm cool. I went to the toilet, came back. She's like, I've enrolled you. Wow. I had a few more drinks and then woke up the next day and I was like, why have I got Ireland on my phone? And I was like, oh, and they get like, a text message from like some like a professor going, oh, congratulations on enrolling. I was like, oh, my God, like <laughs> I've had too much wine. I'm in thousands of pounds of debt. I've got no time to do this MBA. I don't know why I'm enrolled on it, but... Literally, I was like, don't ever go and have a drink with your ex-boss again because like, now I'm like, oh, my God, I'm like back to uni. I'm like, what am I, like 21? So, yeah. Is that the, is that the thing, though, of constantly feeling like, you know, pushy? I mean, because that's incredible. For, and it, that's, I suppose, the big talking point as well is that sort of like the massive gulf between, you know, sort of the pay and, and the sort of, you know, the accolade, you know, having to do... do I, whenever I watch, um, uh, you know, sort of women punt... It feels like you guys, and talk, you know, yourself, Alex Scott, you know, almost like the most well-researched people. Sometimes yeah. it feels like it feels like that. They're, and I suppose in, in turn, it's that thing of they're going like, yeah, you've done that on the pitch, and I guess that's what you're saying is actually then to go into the punditry is then going, well, actually, you know what? We've now almost got to go toe to toe here as well and make sure that people, mm. you know, we, we can say as much as we want here. Do you know what I mean? I yeah, think it, trailblazers, trailblazers for sure. I think, you, like, especially in the media, you've got to do your homework. Because if I make a mistake, it it's yeah. put it's publicised ten times. You know, if if a male did it, and and that's how it how it feels. So we have to do so much more work behind it, and also to get the credibility as well. Um, and also sometimes because I'm not in the male game, I can't call someone up and know, ask someone that's played mm. with, ah, oh, what do you think? Or I don't know a manager. But then sometimes that's good because I just see it. Like, I'm like the elephant in the room. I just spot it, play catchphrase and say what I see. I don't have a bias or yeah. I don't know anyone in that. So sometimes that can work in my favour. But I think I've got... I feel like I have to do so much research and, like, I don't ever want to go into it and feel um, like I don't know something. If I feel like that, then I feel vulnerable, which is... You've, you've, you've got to know your stuff because you, yeah. you can't... There's so many people we speak about, or so many people mm. that are lining up wanting our jobs yeah. that you can't you can't just rock up and fake it. You've, you've, you've got to go and know what you're talking about and try and be the best you can be. Yeah. It's it, true. It's an interesting thing, I mean, and we'll get, you know, get on to play a bit. I'm always interested in that as a pundit. Is it sort of a thing of... Because it feels like it's... It's become such a massive thing. When I was growing up, you know, you sort of... You have, what, St. Degrees, you have Match yeah. Day, and you had a handful of people who did it. And obviously yeah. now there's different avenues all around yeah. and there's different ways that you can and you know but weird it feels like you sort of what is the thing you're going into when you're thinking because obviously you two are both incredible you know ex-pros you've both got an amazing sort of like resume of where you've played how you know the level you've played at but then what does it take that that's a bit more than that when you come well, to a pundit what were my, you what were you thinking the only reason i sort of fell into it really because i play like karen i played in america then i at the end of yeah. my career so the off season was so long, so I sort of it wasn't something I was going for. I thought I'd go straight into coaching, but when I was home for four months, sitting on my backside doing nothing. And I said, get, I said Terry, like, get me some work. Let's do something. So I went in and did it, and I enjoyed it. I love watching football anyway. And what's interesting is that it's competitive now. You've got to find an angle. And the problem with football is it's such a simple game, yeah. and it can be you can get these people with the buzzwords who make it difficult. Yeah, yeah. So when there is something going on, so if, say, for instance, I'm doing Chelsea in the Cup final, right? Yeah. So I work with the an analyst in the week before, and I say, look, I really want to get into how Chelsea defend on the front foot, like Rudiger and Azpilicueta or Christensen, how they just, they, it was really, like, what, like, it would have been a really good piece, right? It was like getting on the front foot, defending, the centre halves are pushing, they're doing something slightly different. It's only, it's only, it's not big, but it's a little, Intricacy, yeah. so it's going to be brilliant. And then Cara done it on Monday Night Football, and he <laughs> nailed it. I'm so oh, bloody, I can't do that now. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. so football's so simple, so you can disappear up your own ass effectively, trying yeah. to make it sound, you know, all these buzzwords and 
underlapping fullbacks and pff, all these not nonsense words. So when there is something new that's going on, you've got to jump on it and get on it earlier, early yeah. to sh explain it to the public. Because I've just got made around what an overlapping fullback is, let yeah. alone <laughs> underlapping. Exactly. It's uh, running inside, big yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you won't have to do that. I've seen you play no, no, straight no, down no, the middle. Ever, I've ever got to worry about being a, uh, any kind of fullback. If a manager uh, comes to you and said, I want you to be an underlapping fullback, you can say, <laughs> you say young man, I'm afraid you're, you're barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> um, did you, do you find that, though? Because well? that's an interesting thing, actually, because mm. I... It's a weird thing, because well, I, I don't know anything about how you go about being a pundit. I Nor was... do I. <laughs> That's what I'm wrong. <laughs> no, no, but, but no, but you clearly, you, you're great. At it, but do, mm. do, is that, do you have like that? Do you, do you go through stuff before? Or do you, you know, so, so for me, it's all, I, I look at it and think, you know, I've watched thousands of games mm. down the pub and at half time, we'll, and I've watched thousands of games at West Ham and whatever mm. and, and England, and I'll sit at half time and have a beer and I'll chat. And at the end of the game, we'll have a chat about it. And then, on the train home, we'll have a chat about it. And that's why I always just thought you did as pundits. Yeah. But it's obviously, you, so you research every team, you look into every, you know, you look into all the little intricacies of their game, so you know it. Is that, is that more of a thing? Yeah, you do, but also, you probably, I didn't, I think, when I retired, I thought, oh, I, I, I know football, you've still got so much more to learn. But it's so different going into TV because you're to a time. And mm. also, like you said, on, on different platforms, we've got to re be relatable to the audience. So there's yeah. no good us saying overlapping, underlapping, yeah. these big fancy words that actually the audience doesn't understand. Yeah. So we have to mm -hmm. actually put it in layman's terms. So if you're on a different show or a different platform mm. that has a different audience, you have to be relatable to that audience and also be in the time. So it's all yeah. like Cara being on, on you know, Monday Night Football yeah. and he's got the time to explain that. Mm. Sometimes we're live and something's happened or an incident's happened on the 45th minute, we yeah. haven't got the time to go into that. So that's where yeah. it becomes challenging that it's actually like you want to be a pundit, but actually it's TV, it's entertainment. And that's what I found yeah. hard is like, actually you, you can't, look like you've got a resting bitch face or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you've got to look like you, you kind of... The, the people want to watch you, they want to learn from you, you tell them something you know, but in such a short space of time, yeah. in the wording that they understand, there's no there's no yeah. good being, like, not saying we are Pep Guardiola, but is the, is someone at home going to understand what you're on about? Yeah. And, and aren't they bothered? Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's well? an interesting like, thing, that as well, though, Joe, because actually that's the other thing that I find really, like, and I think it was refreshing, and that's what I, what I was getting at with Michael, I think that... What you what you do really well, and 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 that I think, yeah, I think yeah. Obviously, we've talked a lot about how much uh, I adore you, uh, but um, and know you it's as mutual. a person. It's but, um, but as a um, but as a player, obviously, you know. But as a pundit, I think one of the greatest things about you, and I think, is is like you know. The, when you made the masala thing, right? No, no, but <laughs> which is, no, but it was one of the best. <laughs> so no, 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 but you owned it, right? <laughs> And that's the, but as a yeah. viewer and all my mates, it would be so easy to sort of blush and get yeah. annoyed yeah, and just yeah, be yeah. like, oh yeah. But you owned it, and that yeah. what that made is that's endearing. When you're watching it at home, yeah. you're not, you know, no one expects you to be um, Attenborough, or no one yeah. expects you, you know, you're, you're there to, you know, next football to talk about it. If I'm honest with you, I thought it was pronounced like that. I yeah, so did I. Time, you know. I still do. I think they should change the name. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think that's that's the other thing with it is it's like, you know. It's like sometimes you know I watch Sunes and I think yeah you know, obviously knows the game da 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 but I think if he if someone went you know oh, we're all going down at the pub tonight da 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 and Jerome Sunes is going there I'd literally be like well I'll see you guys later <laughs> you know what I mean because he terrifies me yeah like, you know, I got, you know, he's a great player knows yeah. his stuff so is there an element where you think oh, actually you know my personality my humour do you bring that to it as well do you think I think it's just about being comfortable and also yeah. relaxed like because it's it is in intimidating yeah. and like it's taken me a long, long time to, like, be relaxed and kind of, you know, smile and enjoy it. And I think that's when you're at your best. And, like, yeah, I'm not yeah, saying it because Joe's here, but he makes me feel really comfortable because he's like, let's just have a laugh, roll with it, be relaxed. And yeah. you kind of... It's similar to football. If you can get the best out of people and make them calm and relaxed, you mm -hmm. always play your best football. And it's the same, like, in, in the media that... Like, someone rang me up the other day and were like, oh, you know, that was the most relaxed I've ever seen you. And I'm like, well... My presenter made me feel really comfortable, so I was just mm, like, yeah. I'm not even... that. You have to get to the point where you think you're not on air, yeah. that you're literally sitting around with your mates talking about yeah, football yeah. at the pub or, mm. you know, in the, wherever it is, just having fun and just explaining, just having yeah. a dialogue. It's great. 
yeah, I mean, that's the crux of, I think, you know, making anything. It's, you know, exactly. It's, I, remember, I remember when I first did it, that little spell when I was sort of just coming to end, I did something with Jamie, friends, yeah. Jamie Redknapp, our, our friend, and he, same, he made me feel comfortable. Yeah. And it really helped me. Yeah, and yeah. also Andy Townsend, who's been on the show as well, I did something with him. He's really good. And he was... Yeah. So he was brilliant. He was the first one pundit I saw that was constantly during the game, clip that, clip that, that'd be good for half time. Oh, they scored, squashed that, we're gonna go down this way. He was like like a director. Yeah. Because I thought Jamie was brilliant. He made me feel so welcome. Obviously the relationship helped, but mm. and then Andy was really professional. So he's doing it properly. So I thought just like I just thought I'd I'd like to be Somewhere in between Hybrid. them, do you know what I mean? Some, somewhere in between them, yeah, like, yeah. And, and we love it. Andy's great fun. Andy's yeah, was pretty, brilliant with it as well. Yeah, great, yeah. But yeah, like, them two for me, them two were the best I'd work with when I was coming. For, I thought I'd try and like always when we get someone new come on, make them feel comfortable. And I'm like, yeah. I'm fresh into it now. I've only been. Do you doing get it nervous though, or did you? Um, or you still pass get nervous. that now? No, I'm still getting nervous. Little, not not. What makes you nervous then? Um. Saying things like tikka masala when you're trying to, <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to describe, trying to describe you one of the greatest happened? academies of all time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, a little bit nerve wracking. No, but I, I, I think that, yeah, I, I think those moments are they're the moments you're gonna get. You know, I, one of my dear friends is Chris Lamar, right? I, Cammy is one Absolutely. of my really, really close friends. I, he, Makes he's me laugh. Been a, he's one of my, I love him to death, right? And uh, and I, I think in with you know. A good player, a solid pro. Yeah. You know, but you know, can we can we book, like through that? You know, the guy when he most mis- didn't see the guy getting sent off and yeah, yeah. Oh, all that's the mistakes uh, that he made. That. Yeah, but yeah. but you know what that did? That that didn't make people go, oh, he's a fucking idiot. Yeah. People loved him for it. And then you know, I'm not saying go into a place where you're making stupid mistakes yeah. all the time. But yeah. what it did was like all of a sudden when you know, Cammy was a mate, and then when we got him into Murder and Successful, yeah. I was like, he was genius on Murder and Successful because he just was so like funny yeah but so like comfortable because he'd been yeah. all it like and and then when i you know i've had a few beers with him been out of him a few times i'm like he's so relaxed when you're yeah, yeah, like yeah. even i've done what, 15 years nearly of stand-up yeah and i'm more nervous about doing stuff and, than cammy is and he's yeah. like you've got to think i've heard every week all these years i'm at the side of a pitch trying yeah. to find something interesting to say yeah trying to make it funny and it's yeah. usually not you know it's you two are doing the yeah. top ends games you know you're yeah. doing a bit he's usually like sort of like Runghorn versus <laughs> Tranmere or whatever. And he's got to try and get people, you know, yeah. you know Soccer yeah. Saturday, all yeah. I used to think is, oh, what game's Cammy going to, where's Cammy? Yeah. Yeah. You know so I mean? yeah. And Where I think it? that's the thing, because it's humanity that you Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and more so in this day and age as well, because you need, we've come through a spell, I think, without getting too deep, where, where everything's so sanitised, yeah. so sort of corporate. So when you get a glimpse of someone just being themselves, it yeah. just stands out a mile, doesn't it? Yeah. And, and, and people accept your mistakes. Yeah. If you're just being yourself, because yeah. we're all flawed. Yeah, mate. Oh, I just think if I'm going to be honest, and we've we got a got... bit philosophizable yeah. there, yeah. don't we? We just need oh, more idiots. <laughs> and that ain't a we need word. more idiots in the world, <laughs> yeah. and it'll be a happier place. <laughs> yes, listen. <laughs> half the... Yeah, we do. <laughs> um, right, Karen. Let's move on. Let's talk about your uh, your career. All right. So was that? God, you look really nervous there. You know, <laughs> I find this bit the hardest bit because I've got a load of questions and it's, uh, I always feel like I'm Parkinson when I get into this bit. Um, uh, but yeah, um, moving to Arsenal, that was obviously the big first big step of your career. Yeah. Was that, what age were you in that? Uh, 18. 18? Yeah. So moving to London, 18. No, I didn't. I um, So when I was, again, because it's different for, for women's football, so um, I was at Birmingham and then... Yeah. At 16, I moved to Loughborough and I lived in a boarding house for like two mm-hmm. years and like studied. So I did my A levels and basically was on a scholarship, similar right. to like the guy's version of Lillishaw. We did it at Loughborough. Right at 16, though. So yeah, at 16, okay. so I lived in a boarding house with like tennis players, um, families. How, how did you find that? You know what? Everyone was like, she won't cope because I was yeah. really shy, timid, like didn't yeah. speak. And loved it because it was probably the first place where I thought oh, I fitted in because yeah. at school you're like the girl yeah. that plays football yeah, yeah. like yeah, back yeah, then yeah, like yeah, yeah. didn't fit in and I didn't play at school just because I got bullied so much so when I went to Loughborough I was like oh I really fit in I'm around like-minded people like Loughborough is fantastic for sport living yeah. in the boarding house you're all the same there's like 50 odd people in there and different sports and like thrived on it really and then at 17 then like played for England and Vic Akers was the Arsenal manager and he uh he wanted to sign us and he came to my mum and dad's house 
and was like, oh, I really want to sign her, but I think it's a little bit too early. She's not going to play. I'm going to sign her next year. Yeah. So I waited and then moved to Arsenal at 18, but I literally only rocked up on a Sunday because right. Loughborough wouldn't let me go and train. So I had to train, like... So when I was at Loughborough, I did, like, Monday to Friday training. Saturday, I went home to see my parents, and Sunday, I played a game and then went back. So I, I literally rocked up to London played the game and then went back. Yeah. So I was never with the team, ever. It's like insanely different from like you at that age because you are you were thrown into it. I mean, similar sort of age, right? Thrown yeah. into the mix, but you're with the first team. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah, like yeah, two yeah. different... How did that... How did you cope with not being around? Like, for, for one day of the week, you're like, I'm a member of the team. And I'm, you know, we're, we're all of an age where um, mm. when we were 17, 16... It's so bizarre to say, but sort of social media, phones, all mm. that stuff that we all take for granted mm. now. When we were that age, I, you know, I certainly didn't have a mobile no, phone. No, no, no. I didn't, you didn't have, you couldn't FaceTime, you couldn't yeah, Zoom, I, you couldn't Skype. How did you cope with, number one, you're away from your family, but then number two, how did you bond with the team? And like both of you, both of you, because it's two different. I think I was really lucky at Arsenal that, because I was in the England senior team, and I knew a lot of the Arsenal girls anyway, they like proper looked after me, and because I was like the young pup, mm. and I was, without being arrogant, I was really talented. Like from mm. a very young age, I was starting for the seniors at 17. Mm, yeah. So when I moved to Arsenal, it was like, and also I was a bit of the final, not the final piece of the puzzle. My first season, we won the quadruple. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it was like, we all wanted the same thing. And it, it wasn't uncommon, like another player would fly in on a Sunday from Scotland and Vic yeah. would fly a black. So it was like, we were all coming in and out and it was just, how do you quickly conform? And Vic Aker was just unbelievable at bringing everyone together, yet people wasn't training or, ro like, literally rocked in for a game and then went. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was it was difficult, but the girls were fantastic. And because I was involved at in England and I wasn't, like, I wasn't a dickhead or anything like that, yeah. they looked after me. Did you feel like you, you, you had to... I've, well, we can I can relate, but did you feel like you had to grow up really quick? Because you're forced into that environment. Not forced, you, you, you're loving it, but... You're with adults, aren't you? You're 17, you're still a child, but you're with all these... I don't think... Some of them women, I would imagine, may have had, you know, families and... Yeah. You know, so it's, it's difficult to... Because that's what I was going to say to you as well, because for both of you as well, <clears> I mean, it's essentially the same thing. You, know, you mm. go into it and we talk about, you know, the fun side of going in, but was yeah. there, like, you know, an intimidation of going in? Because, you know, you're do, a young kid... Do you, know, I, what it, you know, know what it was, big man, right? Were you shy or were you...? I was naturally, believe it or not, I, I, I'm... Well, I was, ve I was very, very shy as a 15, 16, 17, 18 year old. And I got thrust into the spotlight. And it was one of them, we, we, we talked a bit about yeah. Scott last week. Um, and whenever I walked into a room at 17, 18, because I was a star footballer playing in the Premier League, the eyes are on you. Yeah. Then you either like, you either don't go in the room, yeah. which was never gonna happen because I wouldn't, or, you know, you, you, you look, like a mouse, didn't you? Yeah. Or you just front it. So I sort of forced myself to, sorry, to um, sort of change my personality a little bit, sort of become a bit out, more outgoing, more... Mm. I'm mixing with, with, you know, men who've got families with kids at 17. So I, I sort of... I went straight from school, you know, straight with these lads, you know, Razor Ruddock, Trevor Sinclair, Steve Lomas, <laughs> Ian Wright come in. I remember Wrighty, right? So, you know, I'm from Kentish Town, so big Arsenal community. I love Wrighty growing up. He yeah. didn't. He was. I still yeah, love him now. He's a top, of the game. top man. And he'd heard of me, and so I'm walking. I'm in the Chadwell Leaf. I don't know if I said this story. I'm walking and I'm shy, bearing in mind. And uh, I'm having breakfast and I've heard his voice, booming voice. Where's the kid? Where's the one? The kid? And I'm thinking. I'm sitting, eating my scrambled egg, thinking. Oh, f he's talking about me here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going, Where is he? And he's coming. And I, Imagine if he walked past you and went to <laughs> which one? Which one's the wonder kid? Where are I? And where all the youth team like? Is he him right? And I'm well, like, sat with Michael Carrick. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I, went, I, went, <laughs> I went, I think I, I went, hi, Ian. <laughs> I said, it's me. He went, when are you training? I went, who? Harry, get him training with us. Come on, Harry, I want to see the wonder kid, right? Oh, I'm fucking and I'm right here with that. And Harry be like, oh, yeah. right, I'll get him involved as soon as he's, he's with the youth team. And then we trained on separate... So I was so embarrassed, like... And then we trained on separate pitches then... Because back in them days, it was youth team, reserves, first team, three pitches at Chabot yeah. Leaf. I think two and a half, actually. Yeah. Whether we was on the half pitch. And um, 
if someone got injured, like someone went down, Harry had an argument with someone, in, uh, and then Wright would scream over, get a wonder kid, Harry go, I need a left back or something to yeah. Tony or to Glenn Rode, who was his reserve. Yeah. I need a left back. And Wright would be, get a wonder kid, get a wonder kid. <laughs> I'd be like, so Harry screamed me over. This is how it worked. Joe, go in there, play, shuffle it about. Then Wright you'll go, Go and meg him or something. Go and do something to him. Mug him off or something like that. So I've go, so I've go in there and like oh, Ian Wright's telling me to do it. So I go off and I just try and I try and take the piss basically. Yeah, I try and yeah. meg someone and I'd meg someone, and Wright go ah, and laugh and then one of them would clamp me, smash me. <laughs> Was you and not feeling the... pressure though when you got moved up and he's telling you or did you just like literally? Right, he just do do like, like, he, he could have told me to do anything because Ian Wright, I would yeah, have done it right. Yeah, so yeah. and Wright, he'd be laughing and he'd go go on, go on, kid, do it again, do it again. So I'd, I'd just. And anyway, I think every time someone got injured or there was a player to move up, I was always me because yeah. right, or the boys would get me over and because I'd try and do step overs and try and go past people, and that probably helped me get into the first team. So, you, but you had to grow up quick. I was, Some massive respect though, like yeah. them calling you, like get you over. Yeah, I suppose but, so. Yeah, I mean, they're that, not going to bring someone rubbish over, yeah. are they? You're, I mean, you talk about, but you're at that age. That's so you're what 16, 17? 16, 17. Yeah, but you're at that age. Yeah. You're an England regular, so it's um, like it's a whole. Di you know what I mean? So you sort of think about it. No, no, but that that's got to be. And then you you talk about you know this is I think like how brilliantly humble like you are. But it's like you know you're already a fixture in the game. You're at a point where you can go on a Sunday. You can rock up at 17, 18, and mm. play with what at the time is one of the the best football sides. In the world, I mean, the first yeah. season, as you said, let's go into that quadruple. That quadruple Should which have retired is... then. Yeah, <laughs> it's all down here. Climb the mountain. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm down here is. Uh, but that could you? Could that mean that first season? What was that? Because that, I think that's probably the moment where I remember people really talking about the women's game because you had this really dominant side who, who yeah, British side who, who mm. you know, went in, won everything. How, how was that for you in your first season? I think it was like, I don't know about you, but it was like, where do you sit in the dressing room? Mm. That was the biggest one, because like I said, I just rocked up on a Sunday. Like, and it was massive personalities. There's your Kate Chapmans, there's your Rachel Yankees, your Kelly Smiths, Alex Scott. You know, we had like, m like every player had a massive personality and I'd mm. say ego. And sometimes that can be like, ego seen as a bad thing, whatever, but mm. they, everyone had a big ego. So like as this like 17, 18 year old kid who was like really skinny, like mute. They used to call me mute. Mm. And like I'm like, right, wait for everyone to sit down. I don't like you, like, mm. where do you sit? So mm. you like put yourself in the corner, out of the way, do not. I remember this one time there was a massive like argument because someone was playing over someone else. And uh, I literally didn't have a seat that, that game. So I sat on the floor <laughs> and it kicked off. And it like kicked off the same as in like a lad's dressing room. There was like the, the treatment tables in the middle at Bora Wood. Well, like there was like, like it was kicking off. There wouldn't be like a punch up, but there'd be like- Push in. No, like just having it off with some, like, having yeah. a right go. And like, again, I'm mute, sat on the floor, no seat, like thinking, oh my God, like, please just get this over with. And someone, like the person was having arguments, like got all the stuff on the table and like threw it all on the floor. Mm. And cause I'm sat on the floor, then I'm draped in towels <laughs> and everything. And I'm like, get off this and we are like, it was just like, you just, for me then at Arsenal it was just like, keep your mouth shut, know your place, like settle in, understand the culture. Don't say anything. When you're told to play, play, run, um, respect the badge. Like even like things like, it does make me laugh, but. It was, a, it was a really, really good lesson because, like, Vic Akers was our manager. Yeah. And he was, like, the kit man at Arsenal for, like, 20 years. Yeah. But we, like, bought our own kit and washed it. And, yeah. but, like, it sounds, like, dated, but I actually think it was one of the best things he ever did, especially for me, because he made me understand what it was to, you know, respect the Arsenal badge. Yeah. And I saw him yesterday, actually, when we interviewed Emma Hayes and, and him. And so, like, it, it'd give you a trolley and you'd get your kit and you'd look after that kit. Mm. The whole time, me and Rachel Yankee were like, oh, I hope we don't get fouled this week because it's white shorts. We're like, oh, we've got to get all the stains out of the white <laughs> shorts. So it's like, can we get off as clean as possible? But we'd put all our kit in the trolley and, like, bring it. And it was my responsibility. Every time I left Birmingham or Loughborough, I'm like, have I got my shorts? Have I got my shirt? Have I got home away kit? Whatever. Short sleeve, long sleeve, the captain chooses. You bring all that. And, like, I remember, like, getting it out and respecting, like, it was... Again, like some people think, God, you're, you're like... Ritualistic, oh, it's, it's important, yeah. Yeah, yeah like and I it. think he taught me a lot about like 
That's why some people think, as a pundit, I don't like Arsenal. I really like Arsenal. I respect the badge. Because it's a massive, the culture. It's a really cultured club. It's a sort of he, when you talk to he's unbelievable the history of it. Yeah, and that, I mean that's a massive thing. But going on to that and just pick up on like because it's uh, weirdly, you know, like, as a writer, and I want to see the film of you as like the kids are sitting on the floor with people yeah. throwing everything. Oh, and she'd go in the toilet, slam the doors, yeah. and it was kicking <laughs> off and everything, and you're just like. <laughs> She was Welsh as well, and so it was even funnier, like yeah. her accent. I'm like, no. Nah. How did you cope? Where did you see? Where did you fit in though? Because this is a thing. So, so let's move it, uh, like probably to Chelsea in a sense, because that feels like a. Pro I mean, you obviously had those egos at West Ham, but let's say Chelsea, where not necessarily egos, but big characters. You've got really big, mm. you know, JT, Lamps, Drogba. We, we, we were but, youngsters, Tom. Like, yeah, yeah, but, but was there still like? Where did you sort of? Were you? Were you? Um, were you more, more like Karen, or were you sort of like? Were you quite feisty within the mix, or how did you find? Uh, how did you find your? I guess what I'm saying is, how do you find your place within that dressing room? Like you know by, I mean? by the time I went to Chelsea, right, I, I was played 150, nearly 200 games for West Ham, whatever it was, and um, captain, and so I was established, played for England, and I and I'd going in with like JT Lamps, uh, Jono was there, Bridgie, like sort of same age, so it wasn't that big, but a big step for me, like Karen, when you go into the dressing room. And you start you start seeing, I've seen punch ups before down the local boozer and that, yeah. but not these people that were on the telly. I thought oh, that's just something us Herberts did in Kentish yeah, Town. Yeah. But <laughs> but um, yeah, same thing with Karen. I remember I remember getting in one of the games. I think I was I don't know if I was in the squad. I was sixteen, and it was it was Charlton. So it was Neil Ruddock and Carl Tyler. So it was like a scene from the Avengers going out. They was huge men. I was like the size of their razor's leg. Punch up, bang. And there was he was in the tunnel afterwards, throwing bombs. And John Barnes was there. He was at Charlton. So all yeah. of a sudden I'm I'm trying to for some reason, I don't know, I'm trying to break it up, I'm just caught in the melee. I'm thinking, if I get caught with one of these, this is game over. This could be like a, 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 they could be on an attempted murder charge. <laughs> these men, because I'm a kid. So you're trying to find. So you just step. I can relate to Karen because when you step in, when you're a kid and you step into this men's world, and it was ve back then, it's different to what it is now. It was very much a, very much a mas men masculine world where it was like there was punch ups regularly. I say regularly, like two, three times a season, but it was just to find your space, to find where you are. You have to sort of find your, you know, you know, you, you got to grow. You got to make your mistakes, but. You got to relate to the to the to the adults, and you grow up quick. You do hundred percent. You grow up quick. You see a lot very quickly, and yeah. it's sink or swim. Did you ever ever you a punch up guy for both of you? On the on the back foot, big man. Yeah. I, I like to just chirp up. And it, <laughs> so from behind. <laughs> yeah. Neil Ruddock or I John Terry. Good for, well, yeah. Uh, I've had a roll. All right. Nothing. No, I've had like just nonsense ones. Never a proper punch up. A few little <laughs> head to heads. Like I'd a roll round with Idaga Johnson, one a good friend of mine. I had a Why? roll round with what him. What happened? He booted me. I booted him. In training, or yeah, like, in training, <laughs> just booted yeah. Each other. And we're good. We're good pals. I really like Ida. He's a good lad. And we just had a roll round, and then like it was probably one of the, you know, like the worst fights you've yeah, seen. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, <laughs> you know like I mean? two, two real, really hammered blokes fighting yeah, outside yeah, of Wimbledon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. Two clearly not fighters <laughs> trying to have a little roll round. Putting each other's shirts. And we went back into the dressing room. I think, and then it was all done. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Ian Pierce got angry at me, another good friend of my good lad. I didn't cross the ball to him and I said something nasty and he'd come to me and then, Oof. yeah, I backed off big time then, big man. I was yeah. just like, you'd have been proud of me. It was just... Weaseled out. <laughs> calm down, calm down, as I was reversing away. You're watching All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. I've been... With my wife now, 45 years, we're, we're childhood sweethearts. We've been together since we were 16 and 15. Oh, come on, Joe, you're starting to make me cry now. What's yeah. up with you? Jeez, well, that's, what, that's, that's the intention, Alan, to make you all cry. <laughs> Check out the full video now to find out why Joe is Alan's next winner. As your career, as you as you became more... Karen's too nice to have a No, no, but, it, it, but no, I'd say the same as about you. And, and I think... But you're talking about playing football at the very mm. high, highest level emotions and whatever did it was there ever a time where karen like you you were like having a row or whatever and then remember uh, the little girl definitely the... not the same that no. people would say like 
opponents would go like when they'd see us off the pitch and speak you are completely different on yeah. the pitch and off the pitch you're actually a knob on the pitch mm. and it's because you're a competitor you're you're yeah. you, you go into mm. this i was really arrogant on the pitch i got probably from like 26 onwards i probably matured and grew up but from 17 to 26 when you're mm. young and kind of everyone's blowing smoke up your ass and you know you, you're arrogant and you you're good and you yeah. can get away with anything mm. and you can be like I would tell senior players, like I'd be swearing at them, like senior players, and I'm thinking, what, like, yeah. because, because I could back it up, but then yeah. it, that's not the way to get the best out of people, and actually you don't want to be that person. But my personality on the pitch was completely different off of it, like, because I, I don't know about you, it was just a way I felt completely where I could express myself. Like I would wear white boots or any different color boots, mm. but then off the pitch I'm like black greys, like matching yeah, my yeah. personality. But like on the mm. pitch I would express myself and I would tell people and because you're actors and actresses on the pitch, mm, you're there yeah. to A, entertain a crowd or if there was a crowd um, and you're there to just have fun and kind of deliver and that was kind of my arena and just went on there and sometimes, well, a lot of the time, especially in my younger age group, it was just an absolute idiot. But that's, I think that's what makes you though. That's another thing as well though, but do you say that carried about like you're an absolute idiot, but we got to allow the young players to make them so like, to make mistakes, not yeah. just on the pitch, but off the pitch. I see, you know, stuff in the media, and this is me going into management at one day. I made a lot of mistakes off yeah. the pitch. Most of, 95% of them wasn't, you know, didn't get reported because yeah. whatever. Lots of mistakes. Young men and women are going to, you know, and, and are going to make mistakes. So for the, when I see people demanding they get reprimanded and things like that, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, yeah. I don't want to go into names and details, but we know the England players who've, 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 who've done silly things during lockdown. The kids. Can't they're still kids. kids. Children. Yeah, I mean, when, yeah, I guess, yeah. They'll be here in 10 years' time doing this, yeah. and they'd have been a, f a father, a mother, and go, oh, I was silly there, I was silly there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let them mature, let them, and I'd be like that with my team. Yeah. I wouldn't be... There'll be boundaries, and there'll yeah. be a little slap on the wrist, but to discard people for making mistakes is not, not, not for me. It's an important part of life. I think all three of us sit here and, and you, you know, I mean, I'm early <coughs> 40s now. Mm. I look at life and I think of every mistake, of all the mm. brilliant things that have happened, all the things that I've got right, the things that have got wrong, mm. you either learn from them and yeah. move forward or you, uh, or, or you're, stuck in, you're stuck in a bit of a sort of like whirlwind mm. of sort of like, you know, it's either going to eat you up, it's either going to smash yeah. you to pieces or you're going to grow from it. And exactly. I think it's important to grow from those things. I mean, talk, moving on from, from Arsenal and sort of, in what you're saying there with sort of flamboyance of your on the pitch character. Because it was a big thing then when obviously the, the, the uh, American the draft comes in. Yeah. I mean, that's an amazing thing to be a mm. part of. Right? I, I'm obsessed, and mm -hmm. I think we've talked about this, but I'm obsessed with that, just the draft system in general. Just if the difference of that <laughs> from what we've all, we've all sort of grown up with, which is football transfers and everything, yeah. the draft system. What was it like being part of that? It was, it was mad because I was at Arsenal when I was doing my degree at Loughborough and um, my degree was obviously going to finish, um, I think, in the May. And I think the draft then was in like the September and Emma Hayes was the assistant manager at Arsenal. She's like, I, I, I want to take you to America. Um, she'd moved to Chicago. She was the manager then. She's like, I, I want to draft you. So I was like, right, I, I just finished uni and I, I said, went to my mum and dad, I'd moved back home to Birmingham, didn't, I had no money or anything like that. So I was just like, um, said to my mum and dad, Emma said she might draft me, but the draft's in six months. And they went, right. And I went for a couple of job interviews as like a receptionist. I was like, oh, I can't do this. This is not for me. Like mm. suited and booted going up Birmingham town as a, and as mm. a receptionist, I'm like, I did. And to wear your football boots to yeah. give you a little bit more. <laughs> I was like, not for me. So my mum and dad were brilliant. They went, you got six months. You can live here pretty much rent free, but you give it the best shot that you've got. And if you don't get drafted, then you go and get a job, but you've got six months, yeah. play for Arsenal, you're playing for England, but like in between that, train, like train and try and get drafted. So I like, went down my local park, like bumps, like dogs were nicking my ball, nicking my cones, weeing on my bottle, like making my <laughs> own sessions, do you know what I mean? And like going to the gym and trying to get drafted. And the day before the draft, um, Emma rang me up and she was like, I can't, I can't take you. And I'm like, oh no, like my whole dreams are like shattered. Yeah. And I was like, and I remember, I think actually, I think she MSN'd me because she was in the States and we was away with England at the time in our room with Alex Scott. Yeah. She was going to get drafted. Kelly was going to get drafted. And Emma pretty much said, I want Kelly Smith and 
if I get Kelly, I can't take you because of how the draft system works. Yeah. You can only have five internationals on your team. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I, was, I remember being on the laptop and I was like, do I be this absolute idiot and, and like Kamaza and says, oh, you've wasted my time, you've got my mm. hopes up. And I, I didn't. And I remember being there, I was like, don't be that person, that's not who you are. And I, yeah. I, I sent a message back going, no problem, like, wish you all the very best. Um, good luck with everything and like thank for think thanks for thinking of me anyway. The, the draft come the next day and Boston got Kelly, so she was like, I can get you, and so she got me. And wow. I think I was, I think I don't know what pick I was in the world, but I was a 21 year old. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And I think I was third pick from Chicago. Like no one in America knew who I was, um, even though I'd played in like the Euros and, and played at a World Cup, I was still relatively unknown. Mm. And so I got drafted and then I was like, great, don't have to get a job. I'm moving mm. to America. I'm going to be a professional. And But even then, like, she drafted me, but I'm still at Arsenal. Will Arsenal let me go? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God, like, I'm a... Even though I've moved away from home, I'm still quite a home bud and my mum had really bad health. Yeah. So I'm like, can I move to America? So then they, were, like, flew me and my mum out and we, like, looked around and, like, can I live in Chicago? I was like, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. And, and that was it. And Arsenal... I didn't sign a contract with Arsenal, so I was able to go. But the whole period of it and, like, you know, coming out of uni, getting a job because no money in women's football and yeah, yeah. luck, really. So, it's, I mean, number one, I've, I've been told in my ear that you were 19th pick in the world, which is a pretty amazing. Like, it's in, pretty yeah. amazing. The boys were that sharp on the old... I yeah. think I was 15th, yeah. you know. No, they were Derek and 19th. Oh, she's saying 15th, John. I Karen says she's 15th. Yeah. In she's my 15th, head, it was John. 15th. Right. Come on. I think I was 15th. John Gill says he's going to have it out <laughs> here afterwards. Go on, John. Two, two people from Solly are going into it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's... Um, that's, you know, the thing I'm fascinated in, in there is, and I think this is a true sort of thing of your character there, is to, be, to have gone from being... looking like your dream's gone and actually ha hand, ha handling that with utter, like, mm. like you know, diplomatic... At, at 21, yeah, by the yeah, way, 21. Well. Um, the no way would I have been able to no, do that no, at 21. No. I would have vented. So that for if any youngsters listening, yeah. that just shows you, before you type something, you regret. Yeah. Step back. Step back and what think about it. I person? could have really Brilliant. annoyed her, and the next day she might have gone, I don't want to sign that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and you just, you just don't know. It's not about... You don't want to annoy Emma either, do you? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. Um, but it's just like things happen in life and you just and it was my dream because Kelly Smith was my hero yeah, yeah. she mm. was the first English player to play in the state so ever since I was a little girl I, I had Kelly Smith on my computer screen like I wanted mm. to be her yeah and in that moment my dream like you said was shattered but don't be that person because mm. you'll always it, it's actually a real small world and the yeah, industry yeah. that we're in is very small and yeah. I was like Emma's not a bad person she's just got to do what she's got to do yeah. And, yeah. and it's a massive thing for her to bring in yeah. Kelly Smith as because obviously and, I would have picked Kelly yeah <laughs> but what was yeah. the, and the, what straight away when you're there did you was the differences obviously you're professional <coughs> now the differences between the English the English game the women's game the American was there like massive massive diff, you know I was like yeah. really really skinny and like the whole American league is based on athleticism yeah. so I had to bulk up like really mm. quick like pile on weight but turn that to muscle yeah. and sometimes as a female that's not nice yeah and sometimes people forget that that mm. like to be athletic and to to be a better performer you've got to bulk up and actually that sometimes is not great for yourself in no. like how you feel but it's your job mm. so i had to like bulk up and, and and learn how to be stronger technically i was always really good and could hold my own but as you know like mm. you might have all the technical ability probably when you were first coming in mm. you know people just bullying you yeah. barging you off yeah the technical ability then is redundant yeah, yeah. So you've got a you, you know, be. we're speaking about, and it's in Solskjaer speaking about Mason Greenwood. He's got to be improved physically, and mm. the, because you can have all of it in the world, but someone's just got this and just barges you off. Yeah, yeah. it's pointless. Is it, I think it's less important in today's game because they get so protected. Like I'm look, I look like Karen, play, very similar type player to me. I think in a modern football now, I look at like as long as you, you don't, even, if as long as you're clever with your body and get your body in front, they can't touch you. No. Do you know what I mean? Whereas you're right. Go back to watch some of the tackles. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's one on YouTube, Scotty Parker done on me. <laughs> if you Google it, mate, it's brilliant. And I, I love Scotty, he's my pal, but he absolutely GBH. Really? <laughs> and he didn't even get, it wasn't even a foul. I don't even think it was a foul. But it just shows you how the game's changed. Yeah. But back then, when Karen's talking about, you had to, you, I had to, I had to try. And yeah, I remember. Get more physical and just, but yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, nowadays, the boys, it's, it's more a technical game, I feel. When you went to the States, what was the big, was there any massive change for you? Of different, 
different uh, to Karen in the sense that, you know, the States is the place to be in women's football. I've yeah. lived out there and and um, I've seen the, 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 what the infrastructure for it and the, the, the American women's team, when they play, it's as big a deal as the men's team. Maybe yeah. bigger. They love the... It, mm -hmm. So so going out there for Karen at that age, that was like going, you know, me going to a Champions League team, like when I went to Chelsea, yeah. you know, you, you're stepping up. So when I went to America, it was on the downside of my career. Yeah. And I went there and I just, I loved the whole experience. I loved the the, the, the way it was and the way that, you know, I should have, honestly, it, they don't get, like I said, listen, the men's side of football, they don't, they don't get it in the sense, this, this, like you said, it's about athleticism. Like yeah. my first session, we had like a strength coach. He was a lovely fella. And I'm seeing cones everywhere and weights and I'm like, Boys, listen, we're here to play football. We're not here to run yeah. around the pitch and lift weights. But they, all the boys loved it. Like, yeah. like, you couldn't get the lads doing these things in our era. But the lads were like, yeah, great. We're going to lift this. Then we're going to do this ladder. And we're going to be really fast. I'm like, well, you ain't seen a football for 35 minutes. Yeah. How are we going to get better at football? Yeah. <clears throat> and um, so that we changed the culture slightly. Then my mate took the job, Neil Collins, later on. And then they've gone on to be very successful growing the club, Tampa Bay Rowdies. But... I loved it out there, but then w women's football in America is huge. Yeah, it's massive. It is huge, and the girls are they're the world chat. I watched them play at the World Cup. They're something else. Yeah, the American team. They are something else. Were well, you are... talking about people there? Who's, and what and about someone who's changed the, the game out there and like an incredible manager, like in Emma Hayes. Is is yeah. that like you look at her and, and sort of see the difference like she's made out there and and, mm. and in the, just in the women's game in general? Is that sort of obviously you both know, her, right? You both. Yeah, I mean. Karen obviously knows her well. She's from where, where I'm from, you know, Kentish Town, and her dad. <laughs> and I, I've been documented saying I think Emma will be the first women's manager in the men's game. She's got the experience, she's got the, the resume, but it's her character, Karen, isn't it? She like it. She's a lovely, lovely woman, but she she will stand toe to toe with any man, and that is. You know, in a I remember going into, I bumped into her when I was training at Cobham at lunch and I've walked in, she's sitting down with her coaching staff and I've got, oh, Em, all right, how are you doing? All right, Joe, what are you doing? How's coaching? Yeah, it's all right. This is when I was doing my part-time job there. And she went, well, what are you doing? Are you going to be a coach? I went, I'm quite enjoying the media. I'm not ready yet. Are you going to be a coach? She's like, you're going to be a coach or what? Are you going to do it? Or are you going to do it properly? I'm like, I'm just, I'm just getting me past her, Em. <laughs> I'm like, but she's so intense. Like she, Karen said her story about, Booking her on the course. Yeah. She wants, I think that's why she's so good. She demands from her players. And she was like, you know, I was like almost like a bit sheepish. I was like, yeah, I might be a coach in a couple of years, but let me do my podcast first for a bit. <laughs> but she's very demanding, very driven. I think personally she'll be massively successful when she, I think it's not a case of if, I think it's a case of when, when. she steps into the men's game. Is that, what do you think? Do you think that, do you think you, when you look at, you think that's, yeah, that's going to happen? She's the most draining person I think I've ever met because she's <laughs> just like, like I said she, we was at Chelsea. Um, I don't know, it would have been the last year. We were, I think we were going into the Champions League semi final, and um, our pitch was flooded. So we were going to go on the second pitch, but the second pitch um, had lot like, create lots of injuries because it was clay or something yeah. like that, and we were getting loads of injuries on it. And she was like not going on it, and I was like, oh, you know, I'm coming from Birmingham. It's like it's just a pitch, em. We'll just get out there and train. And she was like going not to like mental like no not having it and um kicked up a fuss and we were the f we got on the men's first team pitch which had never been heard of before like she was just going off at the grounds yeah. and like no yeah. not going on it my players are not getting injured not having it standards and she come up to me so we're on the men's first team pitch and I'm like flipping out like she's pulled her weight here like yeah. she's got it done and she come up to me got in my face pointed and went don't ever settle and I was like, wow. she's like, mm. this can be done. And like constantly, she's the most, I'd say draining, but in a really good way in terms of like standards and pushing mm. for things and again, not settling. And um, yeah, she's just extraordinary. And, uh, you know, I was with her yesterday and uh, <clears throat> like you, you sit back yeah. as, as like a pundit and I'm, I'm really privy to watching the session. Like she's mm. like, you're the only one I'm letting in to watch because I had to do an interview with her yeah. and Vic Acres. Mm. And like me and Vic are like chatting away, and I'm like, "What do you think about that?" And Vic's like, "Well, I can see this," and we were both like, "Well, let's let's see the context, because like as a pundit, like you see things, mm. you say things, but 
you know, as a player, sometimes your mum and dad would go, why did you do that? And you're like, well, the manager told me to do that, mm. but they only see it one way. So we were watching it and yeah. we were like, what do you think about that? So then she comes over and we're like, and she like, then she's like, gets a tactics board out and she's like, bang, 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 this is my reason, this, 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 this. And me and Vic were like, yeah, fair enough. We like get mm. it. Like, she's just, she's just like unbelievable. Um, just like loads of, and even like, I'm not, she's never put an arm around me. Like never mm. ever said like, how good, how good I was or mm. never ever complimented us in any kind of way. Like when I was injured, she was like, right, I need you to go and scout Wolfsburg yeah. and you're going to deliver that scouting report to the staff and I want it done by then. You deliver it and she's like, mm. okay, next one. And yet wow. she's got a way of like, like Joe, like it's pushing you, but then thinking I want to do better and It's going to be so interesting when she does it, Karen, because... You know, we are in a world, a changing world at the moment, you mm. know, where, you know, it's, 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 it's going to happen. And it, well, the first time it happens, the, way, the eyes of the world are going to be on yeah. it when it does happen. And, and she's going to need the buy-in. Because there will be some players there. Because footballers, they'll use anything against you. When, it, when they're not playing, basically you've got a squad of 23. Did you're 11 or 14, 15 that are playing, you ain't mm. got to worry about them. You know, results, you win, lose, or draw, they're going to be this, that, that six or seven lads who are not, yeah. or women who are not in the squad. I don't know if it's the same in the women's game, but poison they can group. be they could be the poison group. And what they'll do is they'll use anything against the manager to, you know, to, to demise his, him or her. So I think, I, I, I think how she deals with that with men will be that, that part of the group because. I, I no doubt she'll do it, but that's the that's that's will be where her problem yeah. will be when she gets in because they'll use, I'm sure they'll use being I a, mean, that's the a woman against her with it. Like, so before they even yeah. giving her a chance, about like, oh, it's a you, woman. Do you know what I mean? Why she ain't paying me? What is she, you it's know, always but, difficult being the first joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because you to to change that, so when I played, you get bullied and mm. you, you bit like then that becomes the norm. But you have to go through that. Yeah. And those, mm. So the current group that are playing didn't have that experience yeah. yeah and now again going in the media like yeah you're put onto it and you, you like being that that first group is really yeah, I think hard like you yeah. alex and you so guys have that first yeah. person has got to go to the right club mm. with the right support yeah have the right mentality because the one that changes the norm which mm. it will be her yeah. i have no question about it it it's going to be brutal you don't if want she's it to got be to be ready for that. You, you don't yeah. want it. You want her well, to it go in. Be, yeah, that, it will have to be. That will be the way it is. But what you want her to do is be able to get in and mm. implement her way yeah. a bit. Because I mean, that's the interesting thing. And we'll, like, just sort of like moving the conversation to sort of England as well. How did like? So were you working with Phil Neville? Obviously, now he's out in America, um, and he's a great guy, mm. Phil. But how, what's the differences to you? Because I suppose that's the one thing that you can sort of tell me, Joe, and everyone yeah. about the differences between being having a male manager or a female manager. Yeah. It's two yeah. Compl and, yeah, and then you're talking about Vic as well. Yeah. So he's, what, yeah. What, yeah, what, what was the strengths? Yeah, yeah. So what were the strengths of a male manager managing women? Like, what, and what was the weakness? What did they get right and what did they get wrong? Um, Judging by my wife, how she deals with <laughs> me, it'd be mainly what I got wrong. But... <laughs> yeah, we're obviously a nightmare as... as it's difficult, but it's still football. We still yeah. want to win, and yeah. you're still managing egos. You're yeah. still trying to create a culture. Yeah. So I don't think that really changes. Where it might be different is you might have, you know, fist fights or whatever. Yeah. We might not have that. Yeah. But it might simmer. Do you think it might simmer more with women? Yeah, I'd say it would. But then it it it's like, as a, as what like a lot of the managers taught me is about culture. It's about yeah. getting the right people, not the most talented yeah, yeah, at times. Yeah. So to not have that, you. You do a big yeah. recruitment process about I'm not going to get an mm. idiot in the dressing room. Like yeah. I'd rather compromise that than yeah. So, but whereas maybe in the male game you might get that in and mm. like allow that to happen at times. Mm. I don't know that I've heard that, but um, yeah, I don't think say like Phil. He probably had he had to come in and really like try and win the dressing room over because he mm. never didn't know nothing about the women's yeah, yeah, game. Yeah. Yeah. So then you gain respect by doing your homework, knowing everything and diving into it. And you're Phil like... Phil would do that, yeah. Yeah, he's like, actually, there's a respect there. And, like, Vic, he... He didn't see us as... They don't see us as females. They see us yeah. as footballers. Yeah. yeah. And, like, then I think it's not that hard to manage because you want to play for mm. Arsenal or, you know, Marcus Bignett was my manager. I've had a lot of male managers at Birmingham which, like, will you play for the badge, you want to win, and you're playing football and they... 
you don't see it as gender. Yeah. You see yeah. it as this is a f- group of players that want to play football. Yeah. And the gender thing goes out the window, and that's where it becomes norm. I never yeah. ever uh, don't ever look back and go. A male manager was bad, a female manager was bad or good. Yeah. I look at it as they were my managers, yeah, yeah. they yeah, were my yeah, coaches, yeah. and I've had a mixture of both, and I've never had an issue because they see me as a player. They see me yeah. as Karen Carney, a player that wants to play for this club, this football club, and, yeah, she's got to be managed. But like I say, I work at Visa. It's no different managing me at Visa as a female. Like, it's yeah. still, you have to manage that person. Yeah. So there's, for me, there's no difference, and right. I think... That's where I think sometimes it's like, just got you get to know me. You, it's like yeah. when you work me at BT, the the quicker you know me and the better yeah. you know me. Actually, this is her strength. This is her yeah. blind spot. That's no different yeah. how you'd manage me. In that's a true. That's true. But and I suppose that's where we're going. Where it just becomes the norm. You know, that's where we are at the moment. It's got to come to the point where it's just, it's just football team, football club, football yeah. players, football manager. Well, I think you're in, like, in a wider that. culture, pushing it out of football. I mm. think that that should be a, more of a thing. Yeah, because like... one thing that is quite funny though for for male coaches, and it does then it becomes really easy. And you, you, I think you, I don't know whether you guys will cringe, but the the menstrual cycle is massive in the women's game yeah. about <laughs> injuries, yeah, no, 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 I know, hormones, yeah. and everything like that. And like, there's a lot of research into it. Yeah. So it goes, you're in phase one, two, three, or four, yeah. and it gets to the point then where like male coaches are so it's part of like training because yeah. you train in those cycles. Yeah, yeah. It'll get to the point where like, you'd be like, oh, she's in phase four or whatever and yeah. you manage that. <laughs> and like, that's probably the only thing where they probably, where I'm like, ah, oh. but then I've it becomes- I've got to take this into my becomes, marriage now. No, actually, what phase serious, is she in Yeah, today? honestly, yeah. there's yeah. like apps and stuff and you're yeah. like, right, they're in this, fat, you can train in this and they're going to eat like this and stuff yeah. like that. But it's a massive part of that. And that's probably the only thing where I have a giggle when they're, yeah. Yeah. you see them first come in, they're like, oh my God, but then it, it becomes the norm. Uh, yeah. But also, is that it's, developed yeah. in time? Like, if you go back to when you started, to when Phil comes in as the England manager, oh. has that has like the the understanding of that, and obviously with apps and whatever, has that come become more of a thing now? Mm. Like, well, you just uh, banter and like say if I was like, or if anyone was stroppy, you go phase four. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, you just like you just have a laugh about it then. Yeah. But it again, it becomes the norm, and that's part of performance. Yeah, that would be Jessica Ennis's coach would yeah, have to know yeah, exactly yeah, the yeah. same and he's a male coach. Yeah. Yeah. So again, it's like, it's performance, it's yeah. getting the best out of your athlete and understanding yeah. it and that's the sport that you're going into and this is the stuff that, yeah, because it's all about injuries, yeah. you know, and, and, and trying to get your players fit and robust and strong and this is a big part of women's sport and we have to normalise that. Yeah, cool. So yeah. we, that's quite funny though. Talking yeah, about management, Joe, as we're talking yes. about coaches, there's been... Uh, what's happened with you in the under-21s this week? No, you should, listen, I um, I applied for it. Yeah. It sent in my CV, worked on that. It's the only job I've applied for, but uh, I've, got, I've got a polite no. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a polite <laughs> no. Um, I would have loved it. Yeah. I would have loved, loved the opportunity to, to, st- to, to stand in front of them. They do it via a rec- recruitment company, yeah. uh, which is the norm now for football clubs. Yeah. They get experts in who, who whittle down the candidates because obviously it's a sort after job. Um, I would have loved to, talk, to to interview for it because what I see for the under twenty one job is such a and like I said it's the only one I've, I've I would step away from what I'm doing for at the moment yeah. because when I when I see it's so unique the job because it, it, it you have a group of players coming together for a short period of time and some of them will be seen say for instance Callum Hudson Odoi yeah. played for the first team and then he. He's playing at Chelsea at the yeah. time he got picked. And he goes to the under-21s tournament. There's a mindset, and I've walked in his shoes. I've been Callum where, you know, he's going to feel... He, he'll feel gutted to be there. Yeah. It, might, it might be absurd for people who are out from outside the game. So you've got that type of player coming in. You've got also regular Premier League players who, when you're playing the Premier League, it's the, it's the pinnacle after the Champions League. Yeah. And then you step down to under-21 level... And you've got to galvanise this group of players to, to get a performance when you've got half and not, ha- not not happy to be there. But there's a there's a little bit on it. Yeah. They, they're not fully engaged, right? Because they yeah, see yeah. they're being dropped. You get other lads in the championships who go into a tournament with England. It might be the biggest thing they've done so f- in their career because yeah. it's so exciting. They're getting to play against the best teams in the world. So I've walked in that step to play for England at every age group. I love I loved it. I know the hazards. And I think the FA, what they've done well, is they've, 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 and the academy system, we've got a, a way of developing players. So 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20s is developmental. 21s yeah. is a mix, it's a hybrid, it's developmental. And it's, the, it's almost like 
it's almost like the university. It's the, I feel yeah. it's the last lesson. Right, right guys, we've got to, we're going to the European Championships. We've got U23 players. I've chosen you, right? You need to you need to win this tournament, right? Forget about development. You need to win this tournament because let's see what history. Teams like Germany, Brazil's, yeah. Argentina's that win tournament. Ten years before that, by the way, they was I'd be like, they was winning these tournaments. And we need to find a way to come together. How are we going to do? And and why I think I would have been good at it is because I don't need 15 years, 10 years coaching experience because there'll be people in your staff you yeah. can collaborate with yeah, who will yeah. be able to put a better, you know. So you'd be a manager. I would manage people. the group, manage them, and you're delivering a message to the players. You're delivering a message to the players, and they're coming coming from from wisdom rather than because yeah, yeah. you've I, I've been there, and I'm still yeah. young enough to relate to them, mm. you know. And I just I would have loved the job, but it was. It was politely declined. So I would no no grudges yeah. or anything like that. And I hope whoever gets the job is someone of my ilk. Because I think yeah. it's very important it's an ex player that that role. That, that's played with, at that level. That's played and experienced that because it's such a Do you not it's think that age group's job. the hardest though? Because what like say like if it was Gareth, he's gonna mm. nick your best players. Yeah. All of that. So then it's so like you're in that I always think that's the hardest because yeah. your job is is it to win a tournament or is it to make those players senior internationals. So here's, here's, sorry, Tom, here's, yeah. here's, here's my feelings on it, because I feel it's, it is the hardest. No, trust me to apply for what I think is the hardest bloody job you can do. Because yeah. you do get players nicked off you, mm. nicked off you, listen, the, and there is a developmental element to it. But I think the, the great ones pass through you. You don't. Yeah. You hardly see yeah, it. Yeah, you know I mean? your Foden's, but, yeah. your Bellingham. Rooney's, yeah. Bellingham. They're, yeah. they're not, they're not going to touch you. You're just, there you go, thanks, play a game, see you later, gone. But it's a group of players that you need to develop. And it's more important, I think, the tournaments are so important to do well and success to let the boys taste a bit of success. Yeah. And what it feels like, so that when they go to the European Championship and the World Cup, there's a group, hopefully, of five or six, seven lads who've won a tournament and they know, you know, although on a, on a lesser they know what's going to happen. They know if you lose your first game, what's required. They know, they know what being together for six weeks is. Being a good coach, as in on the pitch, if you've got two or three lads who've got who better than you, let them do it. We yeah. all agree. Football's not hard. We all agree on how we're going to play. This is the system. We, we decide on the tactics. All you've got to be is a, 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 man, a good manager, manage people, manage your staff, and be able to, to manage a game of football, make subs at the right time. Yeah. And then everything else, there's so much staff that's taken care of. This, they do such a great job, the FA at that, putting this process in place. I almost feel the last little bit of the jigsaw would be someone at that role to do it like that. Yeah. It's not me, but I think if they put someone in there like that, who knows? Who Fingers knows? crossed. I mean, mm. hopefully, and this is, I don't mean to be horrible here, hopefully you're better at that than you were at predictions last week. <laughs> um, because uh, I was a big winner last week, Joe. Oh, mate, I had Leeds to beat You must be closing Spurs, the gap now. Chelsea to beat Man City. You didn't manage to get one single right last oh, week. No. So we're going to go into this. All right. Are you ready for this, Karen? Yeah. Predictions? Predict okay. Go on then. This is a big one. It, this is the first one up. Newcastle, Man City. Newcastle to win oh, is 10 to 1. This is obviously going to be, it could be a celebration, celebrations hangover for City. 10 to 1, Newcastle with Coral. Mm. Hitting you can first. Man City to win. Man City, mate. Yeah, Sorry. I'm, I'm, We're all going to go with Man City. I'm, I'm going to go Man City. It's Coral trying to suck us in with that 10 1. I, I see what you're <laughs> doing, guys. I like it, though. It's a good price. Southampton versus Fulham. Coral odds. Southampton to win. Both teams to score. It's 3 to 1. Can you not have a draw, no? You can have yeah, a draw. Yeah, you can draw. I, um, no, actually, I'm going to go Southampton. I think Fulham will be just mentally crushed, won't they? Mm. Southampton for me. Um, this is going to be a lot of these games at the weekend where there's not much to play on. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Fulham, and the reason I'm going to go Fulham is because I like the structure of the team. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like that that now the shackles are off, they'd prepare for next year. I think they might go and get a result. Well, I think they will get a result, but I think that result will be a draw. Okay, a nice so, a f a s last. But not least, the FA Cup final, Chelsea, Leicester, James Madison, score first, is 9-1. Both your old team, who we mm. think, I mean. I'm going Chelsea 100%. Mm. I don't, like, Madison might not even play, he was dropped yeah. the other oh, day, so... Can, yeah, can we clarify uh, what we're predicting here? Is it on the 90 minutes? No, no, full-time, full-time. Full-time, OK, including pens? Yeah. Chelsea win. I'm going to have to Chelsea, go Chelsea. Chelsea all day. I think Chelsea look unbelievable they at the moment. I think they look good. Kevin, it's been an absolute joy having been you in. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you Cheers. Thank you. JC, I'll see you next week. See you next week. And I'll see you guys next week. Can we going to do the Barry White voice? Yeah. 
And I'll see you guys next week. All to play for, brought to you <laughs> by Coral. <laughs>